Hello friends. So today we will just see the next part in material science and metallurgy. So today we are just going to start our new topic that is equilibrium diagrams. So in the last couple of lectures we have seen about the grip testing, fatigue testing, etc. So that testing part it was over just to determine some sort of that mechanical properties that testing is very important parameter that we have seen in that last particular topic now today we will just start with the new part in the material science and metallurgy so equilibrium diagrams it is very very important part as far as this particular subject is concerned because equilibrium diagrams or we can say as a phase diagram are the diagrams which indicate the phases existing in the system at any temperature or compositions so basically whatever may be the equilibrium diagrams are there those are just indicating the various phases in the existing system so what is the meaning of various phases so that phase may be solid that phase may be liquid or again if we increase the temperature it might be converted into the air so these are the some phases various kind of that phases are there so basically when we are talking about any kind of material we have to concentrate on the two phases that phase might be solid or that phase might be liquid okay so which kind of that part we will just cover that we will see this particular topic contains the basic some terms so we have to cover this particular contains in this particular topic or we can say unit so that in the further part we will just see the rules of solid solubility then gibbs phase rule so in this particular lecture we are focusing on this particular rule that is the gibbs phase rule and this rule is applicable for the further part in the diagrams then we will cover the solid solidification of pure metal then we will cover the plotting of equilibrium diagrams then we will cover the lever lever rule again now the next part is the very very important that is iron iron carbide equilibrium diagram or this may say as an fe fe3c diagram so then again we will see the critical temperatures term then solidification and microstructure of slowly cooled steel then non equilibrium cooling of steel then property variation with microstructure then we will see the classification and applications of the steel then the specifications of the steel then the transformation products of austenite triple t diagrams at a critical cooling rate and then the cct diagrams so what is the triple t diagram or cct diagram that we will see at that particular contains but the basically these are the contents that we have to cover in this particular topic now we will just go with this particular unit so first we will just try to cover the introduction part now the one of the most important objective of engineering material metallurgy is to determine the properties of material now why we are doing the engineering metallurgy or what is the objective of engineering metallurgy is just we have to determine the various properties of the material so in the last particular unit that we have focuses on the various testings so those testings are giving the basic properties of the material now but only the testing is that part is not enough just to determine all the properties of that particular material now then we have to see in the next phase how these diagrams we have to utilize 
just to determine the properties. Now the properties of material is the function of microstructure which depends on the overall composition and variables such as the pressure and temperature. So basically whatever may be the properties are there of any material these are the function of various microstructures and those microstructures are depends on the overall composition. Now that any material is not only made up of the single content that is it is not having only the carbon, it is not having only the silicon, it is not having only the nickel. So all those contents we have to add according to those variables. So even if we will see about the steel it is having some sort of that different set uh, sort of that composition even if we will take the example of cast iron it is having some sort of that different sort of that compositions. Now those are having the variables that is the pressure and temperatures. So those are depends on the two variables basically that is the pressure and the temperature. So these two terms kindly note uh, with a uh, very effective mindset because these two terms will be continuously repeated on the next part of this particular lecture that is the pressure and the temperature. Now hence to determine the phase present in the material system an equilibrium or phase diagram is plotted. Now basically just to determine the various contents present in that particular material at which kind of the temperature and at which kind of that various compositions are there we have to plot a phase diagram. Now what is the meaning of equilibrium diagram? So equilibrium diagram or phase diagram is the geographical representation okay or that is sorry the graphical representation of various phase present in the material system at various temperature and composition points. So what is the meaning of equilibrium, equilibrium diagram or phase diagram? It might be say as an equilibrium diagram or it might be say as a phase diagram. So it is just a graphical representation of various phase present. Graphical representation. I am just pressing on this particular word. It is just a graph. One kind of that graph. Okay. Which is plotted for the various phases present in the material that phase might be solid, liquid, anything. Okay. And at a various temperatures and compositions. So whatever may the composition that is the percentage of carbon, percentage of nickel, percentage of silicon, anything, any, any percentage. Okay. And it has been plotted for the various temperatures. So all the phase diagrams have temperature as the ordinate, as ordinate it might be a y-axis and the percentage of composition by weight as an abscissa that is on the x-axis. So whatever may be the temperature it has to be plotted on y-axis and whatever may be the percentage of composition it has been plotted on the x-axis. So this is just a general rule where we have to plot the temperature and where we have to plot the composition. So the composition has been plotted on x-axis and the temperature has been plotted on y-axis. Okay. Now, the use of equilibrium or phase diagrams. What are what is the use of this particular equilibrium diagram? So, before going to see the actual contents, we have to see what is the various uses of this particular phase diagram or equilibrium diagram. Now, the first, the equilibrium diagrams is used to obtain the following information. We have to obtain the following information and for that purpose we have to use the equilibrium or phase diagram. Now it shows the various phase present at the different composition and temperature. So the phase diagram it shows the various phases of that particular material at very different kind of that composition and temperature. Here we have to obtain this particular thing. Then the second 
it indicates the solid solubility of one element in another so whatever may be the percentage of solid solubility it is there of one element in the another that phase particular diagram is indicating those terms then it shows the temperature range over which solidification or liquidification of material system occurs so it is giving the temperature ranges where that material has to be a liquidified state or in the solid state so these kind of that material range we are obtaining so if suppose a cast iron it is there if it is in the liquid form so this kind of the temperature range it might be there and if it is in the solid form this kind of the temperature range it may be there so these temperature ranges we are obtaining through the different kind of phase diagrams so then the next is the it indicates the temperature at which the phase start to melt so whatever may be the temperature exact temperature it is showing where the phase transformation is occurs so, so phase transformation means from solid to liquid or liquid to solid so this particular temperature it may be needed that has to be convert the particular metal into the any kind of that phase that is either in the solid or either in the liquid so these are the different uses of equilibrium diagrams now these are the basic terms you have to understood just to move further of this particular lecture now first is the system now what is the meaning of system the substance that isolate and unaffected by their surroundings are known as a system now basically system is again we can be able to say a part of universe under a study is called as a system now part of universe under the study is the system is what just try to understand i will just give you one brief example suppose our earth is the universe and if you want to study a certain location okay so if you if suppose we have we want to study uh, any kind of that forest kaziranga forest just take one example so that kaziranga it is one kind of that system for us and universe it is the earth so we have to compare those particular contents with the universe so the substance that isolate and unaffected by their surroundings so that surrounding should not be affect on it and those particular substances we have to study that is called as a system so it may be a composition of solid liquid gases or the combinations and may have a metals and non metals separately or in any combinations so a system is capable of changing its composition temperature pressure density etc anything so a system it can be change anything its composition it can be changed its temperature can be changed the pressure can be changed the density can be changed okay so this is the meaning of system now the next term is the phase what is the meaning of phase now we have seen about the system now now what is the meaning of phase a phase it is a physically and chemically composition of a substance that is nothing but the system separate from the other portion by a surface and an interface so each portion have different compositions and properties so this is very much important each portion have a different kind of composition and property so this is the phases so in equilibrium diagram liquid is one phase and solid solution is another phase so basically when we are going to plot the equilibrium diagram there are two phases are present one is the liquid and second one is the solid now next term is the variables what is the meaning of variables a particular phase exists under a various conditions of pressure and temperature and composition so these are the three parameters of the variables first parameter is the pressure second is the temperature and third one is the composition now pressure we are knowing temperature again we are knowing composition it is in the percentage of contents which is present in that particular material so these parameters are known as the variables of the phase so these are the three variables for any 
reads. Now, next is the component. So, these are the substances, element or chemical compounds who presence in necessary and sufficient to make a system. A component means what? So, the component is the element present in this system called as a component. For example, suppose copper aluminium system contains a compound of CuAl and CuAl2. Okay. And therefore, all compositions can be expressed by the molecular species of Cu and Al and hence it is the two component system that is the binary system. Suppose anything it is there or suppose uh, any pure metal is one component system whereas the alloy of metal is the two component or binary system. So any pure metal it is made up with a one particular part and any alloy of metal is the two components. So is UAL these are the two components it is alloy so it is called as a binary. Now alloy what is the meaning of alloy? It is just a mixture of two or more elements having a metallic properties. So in the mixture metal is in the large proportion and the other can be metal and non-metals. So basically these are the two or more elements having the metallic properties. So it is just a mixture of two or more elements. It is called as an alloy. Now Gibbs phase rule. It is very interesting part. So basically on the further portion, in the further lecture we will see what is that particular Gibbs phase rule. Now here you just try to understand what is the Gibbs phase rule. Now the Gibbs phase rule is established the relation between the number of variables that is F. Now here we have discussed about the variables. What are the variables in our system? So basically three variables we have to consider that is the pressure, temperature and compositions. Then the number of elements C. Now the number of elements. So basically that uh, number of elements or we can say the components in the system. So whatever may be the number of elements are there. So we will in the further part we will study some sort of that diagrams where you can be able to clear those terms. What is the number of components and what is the meaning of that degree of freedom or number of variables and the P it is the number of phases. So basically the number of phases might be 2 or might be 1 that is the liquid, solid or only liquid or only solid. So this is the number of phases. So this Gibbs rule is giving this particular equation that is P plus F is equal to C plus 2. So what is the meaning of P? That is the number of phases. F is number of variables that can be changed independently without affecting the number of phases. So without changing the phase, whatever may be the variables are there that we have to consider over here. C is the number of elements and 2, it represents any two variables among the temperature, pressure and concentration. So here basically the 2, it indicates any variable. That is either it may be a temperature, pressure or concentration that is nothing but the composition, composition of anything. Now basically more of the studies has been carried out uh, with a term keeping the constant as a pressure. So that pressure it is a variable which has to be kept constant in the many more studies and that pressure they have just studied under the only the atmospheric pressure. So they have only taken the atmospheric pressure for the study purpose and hence the pressure is it, it has not been considered as a variable and that's why this particular Gibbs phase rule is modified by the this particular equation that is the P plus F is equal to C plus 1 because here that pressure in the last equation that here the two term it is there plus two it is two is the constant but the two it indicates the two variables that is the temperature pressure and concentration or we can say composition temperature pressure and composition but here when we are keeping the pressure as a constant then 
that two in stroke two we have to only take the one so here that one it will be indicates either any one term either that is the temperature or the composition so the phase rule helps to determine the maximum number of phase presented in the alloy system under the equilibrium conditions at any point in the phase diagram so the phase rule can also be used to determine the degree of freedom that can be changed so this kind of that phase rules the purpose of the phase rule it is there now in the next part we will see how that particular gibbs phase rule has been applicable so it is very interesting part to study now basically this is the additional part that we have to understood so the gibbs free energy for the thermodynamic stability of the phases so at a high temperature phase with a high entropy are very stable because the ts term in equation has been negative sign so here this will be the equation the fundamental relationship between the these variables so that gibbs phase energy when we are taking into the joule that will be equal to the internal energy plus the pressure into volume minus temperature into the entropy so these are the basically the gibbs free energy so this is not that much required only for the understanding purpose i am telling these terms so today we have covered about some sort of the basic terms the contents which we have to study and the most important part that is the gibbs phase rule so at high temperature phases with a high entropy where the ts term equation has to be negative similarly at high pressure phase with a high volume are unstable because the pv term has to be a positive signs and the gibbs free energy so these are related to the some additional part in this particular content and i hope you have enjoyed this particular lecture and in the next lecture we will just go with the further terms that is what is the me meaning of pure metal what is the various kind of that solid solution the meaning of solid solution and the next is the hume rothery rules of solid solubility so hume rothery rules it is again the interesting part in this particular lecture and then the further part we will just see at various kind of that phases that cooling curves how the gibbs phase rule has been applied so thank you very much for patience listening of this lecture